What's up guys, Blade Master here bringing you the second of possibly three matches between uh, Achilles from the Agony Clan and Attil the Great as part of the Total War YouTubers Tournament quarterfinals. Now, Attila the Great uh, managed to very easily win in the, uh, even though it was a Pyrrhic victory at the end of the day, it, uh, it was kind of decided very early on by um, excellent use of his heavy horse. So Attila the Great uh, used Boya in the first matchup. In this matchup, he's going to be using Rome and Achilles is taken uh, Tillis and he's fighting in Armavir. It looks like, uh, I think maybe Achilles has decided this map. I don't know who decided the map, but if it was Achilles, then this is an interesting choice because it means his raiding horsemen, which he's bound to bring, will be a lot less effective. His potential Thracian warriors would be a lot less effective. I do not know what tribal warriors' charge is. Uh, 26 is not bad. It's better than veteran legionary's charge or legionary cohort's charge. So in that sense, it is a strange choice if Achilles has brought it. Again, I'm not sure if he did. Uh, but let's see. So... Um, Attila the Great has brought a total of five Hastadi, it looks like, up here. He's also brought a couple of Saki, or uh, one Legionary Cavalry and one Saki Equites on his right. And again, five cav. This five cav seems to be a, a little pattern that's forming up in uh, Attila the Great's uh, builds. Because I think he uses uh, a total of four cav to just tie down the enemy cavalry and then uses fifth to try and run some rear charges on the enemy's main line. He's brought some Equites, three Equites on his left flank. So apart from the five study, it looks like he's brought a line of veteran legionaries, and that uh, it looks like he's brought six veteran legionaries. And what are these two? Two principes. Wow, that's strange. So six study actually, uh, five on his right and one on his left, and uh, a you know kind of center and left flank made of uh, six legionaries, veteran legionaries, and a couple of principes up in the center. One general and bodyguard unit. Now Achilles, on the other hand, has brought three raiding horsemen. He has also brought. This is a really strange build, actually, because he's brought a ton of Celtic warriors, uh, and they're all there. There is second line, so he's brought a total of six Celtic warriors. So we can see four over here. So that's yeah, that's four here, and each of them have got a double experience chevron. He's also put a couple on his flanks. I believe there'll be one somewhere here in that forest. He's brought a total of two Thracian uh, warriors as well. That's uh, from what I saw in the faction screen. Not really sure. There's one here and there's one probably somewhere also hidden in the forest. He's also brought a total of six tribal warriors. Very standard choice with uh, Tillis, whom he's going to keep as his main line. Of course, with their extremely heavy armor and, uh, you know, great melee defense, they are a very decent unit to use as main line. I mean, if, even if they do get charged, it's not like they'll suffer a lot of casualties. He's brought a couple of mercenary Thracian Paltas. Very good unit to bring because they have 41 missile damage. Against those heavily armored Romans, they can actually do quite a bit of damage. He's also brought an Oathstone General. Again, very standard choice. And he's brought the strategic general which is a very smart choice now Attila on the other hand has brought the Caesar general which I am not really sure is a very good choice maybe bringing bringing a strategist general uh, or maybe using a war cry legatus when they time that in with a rear charge could be a pretty smart uh, idea I'm just not really sure if uh, Caesar is a good general choice at this point because hardly any of the units have uh, abilities so one of the big uh, points of using a Caesar general is to uh, is that they can uh, recharge the or maybe like make just make the reload or the recharge rates of your abilities a lot quicker and that's the thing like and none of his units over here none not not a single one of his units have any sort of ability uh, these you know that attacking tissue is not an ability it's just a formation so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this pans out the five hastati over here is a very odd choice uh, from Attila the Great just in terms of how he's deploying them. That means that uh, this right flank of Attila is bound to collapse sooner or later, much more likely sooner than later. But if he, uh, the same thing can be said of his left flank, he can collapse his uh, veteran legionaries onto the rear of. Uh, uh, of Achilles' tribal warriors and then attack them because the best way to kill off tribal warriors despite their high melee defense and their ability to shield wall is to just rear charge them because that melee defense is not going to play anything if you can attack them in the rear. Of course, they also have 55 base morale which isn't great so that means they're very bound or very liable to route very quickly especially when you can um, get a rear charge in. These equities are not going to be of much use, I would say. Uh, as for what's going on in the battle, the three raiding horsemen really haven't done too much. They've just been screened off by these Hastadi. Of course, if the Hastadi come under too much fire, they can just deploy their Testudo. Although, I mean, I don't really think that's uh, going to be too uh, great of a move. I mean, if you're just going to put Hast uh, a Testudo, then that your the Achilles is just going to be less likely to start showering or wasting his ammo on um, 
on these studies just too decisive of a move like too anti-missile of a move much more useful i think in very end game when you're just faced with some archers and you want to tank up some missiles i'd say but i think this is quite a uphill slope for uh, attila the great and uh, achilles is just taking his time just chilling and let's see what he's trying to do here he's moving around with some of his tribal warriors this is, he's getting really close uh or he's doing this really really close to um attila's uh, lion and now Attila is deciding to charge. Let's see what the engagements he's taken. He's going to gang up on one uh, tribal warrior with two veteran legions. It's not a good idea. But with this, uh, with the extra numbers that he has, he's going to destroy the Thracian warriors ideally and then collapse onto the center. And now these Thracian peltas are going to start showering their uh, missiles, but it's going to hit a lot of those tribal warriors. He needs to put these tribal warriors onto uh, shield wall as soon as possible. Here, the Celtic warriors are going to be engaged with Hastati with the double experience chevron. They're going to do brilliantly. These tribal warriors will actually destroy these principes. I would say. Now the extra. Uh, Celtic warrior, this is very smart. He's going to gam gang up on this Astari. Okay, okay, he's not gotten a rear charge or anything, but with two Celtic warriors with double experience chevrons, that's, that means a hole here, that means a rear charge here or here. Anyways, these tribal, these Celtic warriors are going to destroy this Astari. These Celtic warriors are going to destroy this Astari. So that's a smart play. These uh, double experience chevroned up uh, Celtic warriors actually seem to be doing really well. And now these tribal warriors, I don't think they got a proper charge off, otherwise they would have gotten a lot more kills on these veteran legionaries. And if they didn't get a proper charge off, that means they're completely wasted. So those tribal warriors, oh, those are not Thracian warriors. Okay, so these tribal warriors will actually do pretty well. Thracian warriors, on the other hand, are chasing after these uh, equites, and they're actually doing a pretty good job. 24 kills so far. These uh, equites have, uh, have uh, hit these tribal warriors. They have put shield walls, so those equites are not going to do anything. Meanwhile, these Hastati have, um, have routed very predictably and uh, those uh, Celtic Warriors have just done brilliantly. That's an excellent uh, use of these Celtic Warriors. It's a huge risk. I mean, I would I would instead have brought like a couple of old Sworn just to shore up my mainland and protect against like Avocadis. But he's taken a, a kind of a risk, but it's just really paid off. These Celtic Warriors, of course, they don't have great morale. But, so once they got rear charged, I, I, did they, didn't they get rear charged? Yeah, attack in the rear. So they got rear, yeah they got reassured by the legionary cavalry so they are going to uh, drop but just the excess numbers that they, that he has along with their excellent quality means that they're going to be specialized study killers. Now Celtic warriors here with their double experience chevron will actually do pretty well against Principes and of course these tribal warriors are there to help out in that engagement. Meanwhile these Thracian warriors have just done an excellent role as an anti-cav uh, uh, unit. Just brilliant job. Uh, 91 kills, single experience chevron. They are very susceptible to the charge, but it, it, it looks like uh, Attila didn't really utilize that. These Oathsworn have not really even played a factor into this game, but it definitely looks like uh, that um, uh, Achilles is very decisively go is going to win this match, I believe. 69 kills, or sorry, 69 men left on the veteran legionary, 74 kills with them. These Thracian Peltas are going to start showering missiles onto the general bodyguard. They are very heavily armored, so it's going to take a while for them to start dying. And meanwhile, these Thracian Peltas, after using their quick reload, are going to be pretty tired. But these raiding horsemen, this is going to be a huge decisive blow. These raiding horsemen have come in to attack this general and bodyguard, so that means they are just about dead. And I think that's just about GG for uh, Attila the Great. Now, veteran legionaries, like I said, this wasn't a good engagement because those two units, uh, on top of having formation attack, which means that they cannot uh, surround, and you can see they're clearly not surrounding this tribal warrior. It just means that they're going to bog, they're going to get bogged down, and the extra numbers that he has really isn't going to play much of a role. Of course, tribal warriors have a 70 melee defense, like I just pointed out, so they will take an extremely long time in uh, dying to a frontal uh, engagement. So he needed to have used utilized the space to try and rear charge, and he didn't do that, unfortunately. These tribal warriors, on the other hand, uh, they haven't done too much. 110 kills actually is not bad, but they just got swarmed by excess numbers. But see, look at the numbers of y units that Achilles has. 108 units left in these Celtic Warriors, these Strapple Warriors at full strength basically, 84 men, 85 men Celtic Warriors. And he also has some Thracian Warriors I believe all the way up in the distance. Uh, rear charge from them would be just devastating to these low HP uh, um, armored uh, Roman troops. But speaking of low HP, those Thracian Palace are actually going to do a great job now because they're getting flank shots slash rear shots onto these veteran legionaries while they're faced up against Celtic Warriors. The double experience chevron Celtic warriors have actually seemed to be a really smart choice on the part of uh, of Achilles, and now he's going to use these uh, excess units to just come in and rear charge, smash off those uh, veteran legionaries, and uh, decisively put this game in his favor. I would say. So Celtic warriors coming in, I think yeah, rear charging these uh, veteran shield warriors. The Oathsworn have done brilliantly. I don't know what they did, but like they, I didn't even look at them. I mean, they they didn't really seem to be coming into the game too much, but. 
even though um, they they are attacking you know these veteran legionaries, it's not like they're doing they're not playing a huge decisive role. Just running uh, after some um, stray Roman units and using these uh, Celtic warriors and these tribal warriors to their maximum extent. He didn't really need to use his old one too much, and uh, you know that just says that he played really well. Those Celtic warriors. Uh, with the double experience chevron and then moving them around was a great move but it wouldn't have worked nearly as well if um, if Attila did, uh, if Attila, Attila the Great didn't bring as many Hastadi and then ju and just put them like in one side I'm not really sure why he did that he should have just tried to intersperse those Hastadi that's just a, a very common theme that we've seen the, uh, it, the well Achilles kind of interspersed his uh, Hastadi, but at the end of the day, he did put them uh, in the center, like, uh, I mean, along with his main line. So what that did was uh, it gave Attila the Great, in the previous match, it gave Attila the Great a very easy target to rear charge. And over here, uh, what it did was it gave Achilles a very easy target to just use his excellent Celtic warriors who have been double experienced chevroned up to just attack and destroy. And he just used that to his advantage and along with those three raiding horsemen, I actually didn't really do too much but gave him a uh, mobile aspect to his game. He did really well. The Thracian warriors did brilliantly. They, I think one of them was just used in an anti-cav purpose. Tribal warriors, the meat and potatoes of any uh, Tillis build, just did brilliantly. I mean, they, you can see they didn't get many kills but they bogged down those veteran legionaries and they just lasted for the entire game. So, I think actually the, the Celtic Warriors probably won him the match. The Mercenary Thracian Palace didn't do too much. The Oathsworn did a lot. I'm not really sure what they did, but because the main line was just held up very well from, by these tribal warriors. But the Hastadi, bringing bring so many Hastadi and then uh, deploying them on one side was, I think, what lost Attila the Great the, uh, the match. And the Principes were also a quite a, kind of a questionable decision. The Legionary Cavalry and the Saki Equites and Equites didn't really do too much. We can see that in the previous match, he microed his Cav really well. In this, in this one, he probably did just as well. But the problem was he had to run away from raiding horsemen. And then he was chased around by those deadly foxes. So his um, Cavalry on, the, on his left side, the Equites just didn't do too much. He wanted to get some rear charges off. And that's a very smart decision because those tribal warriors, if they got rear charged, they could have uh, dropped very quickly. I think maybe that's part of the reason why some of these uh, tribal warriors got such few kills but at the end of the day it just wasn't enough anyways guys that's the end of this battle hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more peace